Hey guys, welcome to another episode of 180 Briefs. Again, this week we're going to have the pleasure of our guest speaker being CJ Cousins. Um, how is things? Everything going well? How's your household? Lately, um, if you don't know, I've been hired by the church to be the building and office manager and I have to tell you it is a lot of work there is a lot of things that this building back here and all of it that goes that way needs a lot of work this building is older than I am um, and you know because it was originally the building over yonder until they built this one so it's an old building and it has all kinds of issues and it is falling apart even though there's not really anyone here so that's one of my challenges is getting things together trying to get quotes and then realizing that you don't have money and you can't really do uh, fundraising too much because how do you convince people to spend money in a building that they hardly ever use because of COVID, no one's allowed in. So uh, it's a very interesting thing. But how is your house? Um, how are you doing? Are you with your families? Are you being able to take care of things? Are you able to um, protect your house and keep it running? How about the more like the family? Is your family going a little crazy with this whole COVID thing? It's the... I'm going to try this again later. All right, guys. So here's the thing. The reason I had to interrupt the video was because of the major distraction that was going on across the street. And it kind of fits into what I'm kind of asking. So there was this car filled with teenagers that were driving around in front of me and there's a house across the street if for those of you that are familiar with the big huge white one that has uh, it's in the cul-de-sac across the street um, they drove up into the driveway and were doing something and then the person who lives there kind of yelled at uh, them saying what are you doing and they just ran back into the car and took off. And I had to videotape the car leaving just in case there was an issue and the police showed up. Then they could use my video for seeing what the uh, license plate was. But that goes back to protecting your building. Just like with the church, with my new position there. I'm walking through the building looking for, you know, if there's any leaks or um, any flooding because we've had a lot of that in the past year or whatever. You know, doors being ajar and finding out that there's a homeless person living in there. Haven't had that one personally yet, but I know that's been an issue in the past over the years. Um, so it's basically what are you doing to protect your building, protect your family. So are you, and I know like a lot of us, we're keeping our families close. We're not letting them go out, our kids going out to certain places because you, know, you don't want to get them exposed to COVID or anything like that. Uh, you're protecting them from other dangers of life. Um, what are you letting into your household? And that's uh, a hard thing for us because sometimes we, you know, the kids are watching whatever they're watching or playing games that maybe they shouldn't be playing. And it's a hard thing. So what are you doing? And I'd love to see in the comments. And so, you know, CJ later in his uh, presentation, he's going to talk about things down below. But since I merged his video with our video, you won't see the same stuff that he's talking about on the bottom of his YouTube channel. So just so you know, but 
down below in our comments, tell me what you're doing to protect your household. What are you doing to, you know, strengthen it? You know, at the church, we're trying to rebuild the parking lot, but there's a sinkhole. For those of you who know, there's a major sinkhole in the corner, and we got to figure out how we're going to reinforce it, figure out where the drainage issue is going, and take care of all that. But we're talking $10,000 or more that we don't have. But like that, you know, you're trying to do pre um, doing stuff to prevent things happening in the future. So in your family life, what are you doing? Are you spending time together as a family in prayer? Are you spending time together as a family in the Word? And CJ touches on that later, which I didn't know until I watched his video. Um, but just just thinking about that as you go throughout the week. Uh, what are you doing to protect your family? And, you know, Ephesians 6.12, you know, really goes into, you know, we're not fighting against people. We're fighting against spiritual warfare. And... Just think of all the different things that are, it's so hard. I mean, it's, it's hard for us as an individual, but now as a family or as a community where we're trying to protect it from all the things that are going on. So stay strong, uh, protect your family, protect yourself from the craziness of this planet. Uh, don't get so trapped on all the junk on Facebook. Um, we all do it. But there's so much garbage out there, so much negative stuff. Um, stay strong in God. Do the prayer. Go into the whole uh, spending time, quality time in the Bible. And be with your families and protect them. Love you guys. Have a great week. Uh, if you're new to these videos or maybe you come often, subscribe and, and like it and share it with others. We'd really appreciate it. Again, welcome to 180 Briefs. Welcome to Living For Him. I'm CJ Cousins, inviting you to experience the joy of life in Christ. Today we're talking about temptation. Do you ever find yourself struggling with temptation? Maybe you find yourself making a commitment to never do something ever again, and then in those weak moments you find yourself struggling and fumbling right back into that thing you said you would never do. Well, if that's you, then I want to invite you to come with me today to Matthew chapter 4. We'll discover three powerful principles on how to overcome and live victoriously over temptation in Christ. Join me today on Living for Him. Most people, when they see my son, they look at him and they go, oh, he's so cute and he's so quiet, so laid back, and they're pretty much right. Uh, however, they don't see my son typically when he's tired, when he's hungry, and then you see a fussy, cranky little boy. Still cute, but fussy and cranky. And I realized when I was watching this dynamic kind of take place with my son that I'm exactly the same way. He's really reflecting how I can be sometimes. Most people see me and they go, oh, he's a nice guy, he's laid back. But trust me, if you ask my wife, find me when I'm tired or I'm sleepy or I'm hungry or just maybe emotionally drained from a long day, and I can be cranky and fussy as well. And the reality is it's how we're holistically made and designed. Whenever we are emotionally drained, tired, sleepy, hungry, these tend to be the moments where we are suggested with temptation to fall into sin. And so the devil who studied us for thousands of years thought that he could do the same thing with Jesus. You see, after Jesus in Matthew chapter three was baptized at the Jordan River, he now goes into the Judean wilderness. And he goes there for 40 days and 40 nights to be, tem to be tempted by the devil. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tempted. He didn't send him there for a setup for failure. He sent him there for victory. And so when he goes there, the devil approaches Jesus and he tempts Jesus by starting with if, if you are the son of God, an identity question, which is basically the basis of all the temptations that we're going to follow. And he says, look, there's some stone here. Why don't you turn this stone into bread? That shouldn't be too hard if, 
if you're the son of God. And Jesus' response is very informative for us. Jesus immediately goes, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And here's where we find our first principle. If you're going to live victoriously over temptation in Christ, you've got to live daily dependent on the word of God. Just like your food that you eat every single day. If you eat daily, you need to eat spiritually daily in order to thrive in this life. And here Jesus is showing us how by the word of God we can first find the assurance of our identity. Jesus is listening now, echoing in his mind the word of his Father. Back at the Jordan, God said directly, you are my son in whom I'm well pleased. Before ever Jesus ever did a miracle, before he did anything as Messiah, God already told him that he's his son, his identity, that he loves him, right? And that he's pleased with him. And it's the same thing in your experience with God daily in the word. In the word of God, you find your identity in Christ. You're satisfied in him, you're complete in him. And you have the assurance of your salvation in him. But also, you know that God loves you. He sent his son to save you. And you get that assurance daily as you spend time in the Word. Well, here the devil recognizes, okay, Jesus is now, he's, he's founded on Scripture. So the devil changes his tactic. He takes Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem. And he shows him uh, the temple and he says, look, uh, why don't you cast yourself down? He begins to quote Scripture that actually suggests from the Psalms that if he does this, kind of demonstrating his power, right? He's the Messiah. The angel should come to his rescue and kind of presumptuously put himself in a, a position where God will have to come to his rescue. But Jesus again says, it is written. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. You see, what Jesus is letting us know here is if you're going to live victoriously over temptation in Christ, then you've got to not put yourself in presumptuous situations that will cause you to be in a compromised state. You see, even if it's something that's good, sometimes we try to do good things without God, without dependence on God. The devil is trying to get him to do something to quote unquote prove his messiahship by doing this amazing feat, by causing Jesus to presumptuously put him in a place where God would have to deliver him. Sometimes we're tempted to act outside of dependence on God, out of dependence, not, not depending on his word. And the devil also knows how to quote scripture. Not everybody that's quoting scripture to you has your best interest at heart. You've got to know how to know the word of God in such a way that you know whether or not it's something that's causing you to go away from dependence on Christ or to move forward in dependence on Christ. Well, the devil goes, well, if I can't get Jesus to act presumptuously and put himself in a compromised situation, he does something else. He basically now shows Jesus his cards. He takes Jesus to a high mountain and he shows him all the glories of the kingdoms of the earth. And he says, Jesus, I will give you all of this. If you will bow down, give a brother some props and worship me. And here's what he was trying to get at with Jesus. Look, Jesus, you came to declare yourself to be the Messiah, right? You're starting your messianic ministry, right? You are going to establish your kingdom on this earth, right? By those drawn to you through your sacrifice, right? On the cross. Well, why don't you bypass that whole cross thing and I'll just give you all the kingdoms of the earth for free. Like, just, let's just bow down to me and I'll give it to you, Jesus. Jesus responds immediately. Again, it is written. And then he tells him, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you worship and serve. And then he tells him to flee and he leaves. And here we find our third principle. If you want to live victoriously over temptation in Christ, then you've got to stay focused on God's mission, his kingdom building mission for your life. Sometimes it's because we're distracted. We're not focused on the plan and purpose that God has called us to. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, you're called to know Christ, but also to make him known by multiplying disciples to build up the kingdom of God. And sometimes we're just distracted. We have too much idle time, or maybe we're just on Facebook or social media and we're missing meaningful time investing in the lives that God has called us to invest in or focusing on serving others through our gifts, our skills, uh, our ministry, our profession. 
we're not focused on what God has called us to, or we want a crossless mission. We don't want to sacrifice for Jesus Christ. Jesus recognizes that this temptation is actually going to cause him to deviate from the very thing he came to do, and that is to go to the cross in order to establish his kingdom. I want to encourage you today. If you want to live victoriously over temptation, you've got to depend daily on the Word of God, where you find your identity, where you find the assurance of the love of God. You've got to not put yourself in presumptuous situations that will cause you to want to do things that God will just have to deliver you from. You also want to stay focused on kingdom mission in the multiplying of disciples for Jesus Christ. But here's even better news. The victory that Jesus got over temptation is actually a representative scene in the life of Jesus that illustrates that the perfect holy life of Jesus was completely victorious over every temptation. His perfect holy life is credited to you by virtue of his death on your behalf on the cross. Every sin that you've ever mistaken, every mistake, every temptation that you've stumbled into, into sin, Jesus says, I'll take responsibility for that and I'll give you my victorious life. Here's the good news. You learn how to resist temptation and grow in victory in Christ from a place of victory. You are already victorious in Christ the moment you receive him as Savior. He gifts you with his victory. He gifts you with his perfection. And you now begin to grow into the very thing he's already given you for free. This is the good news of the gospel. I invite you right now. There is a link below this page. I want to invite you in the description box. Click on it if you want to respond into what it means now to follow Jesus. If you want to receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. And here's the other thing. We want to invite you to answer this community question today. Where is it in life that you find yourself the most vulnerable to temptation? Where is it in life where you find yourself the most vulnerable to temptation? We want to thank you so much for joining us today on Living for Him, where we're passionate about igniting a movement of joy-filled followers of Jesus Christ that want to make other disciples. If you want more information about what we talked about today about temptation, look below in the description box below and you'll see the link to the blog series that will unpack this in greater detail. Also, we invite you to help us make Jesus go viral. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. We also invite you to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and if you want to also subscribe to our podcast, we invite you to do that as well and share it with your friends in social media. We want to make Jesus go viral. Once again, I'm CJ Cousins and I'm living for him.